Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about finding perimeter and area in the coordinate plane. The perimeter and area in the coordinate plane is based on skills that we've already done. A lot of these later chapters are going to be just built upon that foundation that we already have. So when we think coordinate plane, we're going to be using things like distance formula, we're going to be using slopes, we're going to be using counting methods, so different things like that. In this first example, we're going to be finding perimeter and area of the polygon. First we need to plot the points. So let's go ahead and plot these points. I'm at negative 4, 1, for A, and B is 2, 4, 2, 4, C is going to be at 4, 0, and D is going to be at negative 2, negative 3, eh, right about there. When I connect the dots, look at what I've got. I've got a rectangle. I need to recall the area for a rectangle formula. And so what I'm going to do is verify that this is a rectangle. So what I need to do is I need to, to see that consecutive, I, wa I want to check to see if there's right angles. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to see is BC perpendicular to AB? That's the question. Well, if they're perpendicular, then the slopes are opposite reciproc reciprocals. So the slope of BC and the slope of AB should be opposite reciprocals, which is going to give me, um, you know, perpendicular sides. So the slope of BC is going to be rise over run, so 0 minus 4 over 4 minus 2 gives me negative 4 over 2 is negative 2 over 1. And the slope of AB is going to give me 4 minus 1 over 4 minus 1 over 2 minus a negative 4 equals 3 over 6 equals 1 half. Well notice when I compare these they are opposite reciprocals of one another. And so that means that I have a 90 degree angle right here. <clears throat> I'm going to continue to find the slopes because then I can compare them all. So I have the slope of BC, the slope of AB, the slope of AD, I need next. So AD. So that's going to be negative 3 minus 1 over negative 2 minus a negative 4. Let's make that a little bit clearer. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4 over 2 gives me negative 2. And the slope of the fourth side, DC, equals negative 3 minus 0 over negative 2 minus 4 gives me negative 3 over negative 6 gives me 1 half. So when I compare BC and DC, BC is negative 2 over 1, DC is 1 half, so I know that these are perpendicular because their slopes are opposite reciprocals. And when I compare AB and AD, AB is 1 half, AD is negative 2, so those are opposite reciprocals, and actually that was this one. So then I need to compare AD and DC, negative 2 and 1 half. So this is a rectangle. To find the area of a rectangle, it's going to be base times height. Well, I need to find the lengths of these things. So really, I only need to find the length of two of them. So I need to find length of AB. So if I find the length of AB, actually, let's use um, CD and BC. The length is going to be and the height or base times height. So the length is going to be equal to the base. So the length of DC. When I find the length of DC, I am going to use the distance formula. And I'm going to have 4 minus a negative 2 squared plus, uh, let's see, 
negative 3, so 0 minus a negative 3 squared. So that's going to give me, here is 6, so this is 36, plus 9, square root of 45, which gives me 3 square root 5. So that's the length here. So the length is 3 square root 5. And if I scroll down a little bit to give myself a little bit more room, I'm going to find the height. So the height equals length of BC. And if I use the distance formula once again, the distance formula tells me that I'm going to have 4 minus 2 squared plus, and then I'm going to have 0 minus 4 squared, which gives me 6 squared, 36 plus 16. So this is going to be No, this should be, sorry, <laughs> I messed up. This, is, this uh, should not be 36. This should actually be 4 minus 2, so that would just give me 4, right? So this is 4 plus 16, which is square root of 20. So that is 2 square root 5, because I have square root of 20 and square root of 4 times square root of 5. So 2 square root 5. And so my area is equal to base times height, which is equal to 2 square root 5 times 3 square root 5. So I have 2 times 3 times square root of 5 times square root of 5, which gives me 6 times 5, which is 30 units squared. Okay? I took a lot of shortcuts there because the distance formula is something we should know by this point. Slope is something we should know by this point. Find the length of the, the width, find the length of the height, we're good. And we multiply them. The other thing that we could possibly do <clears throat> is find area in the coordinate plane by subtracting. So we're going to find the area of this polygon. And I've got some wonky kind of vertices. So this is going to be W. X is going to be, let me make sure of this. X is 4, 2. Y is 2, negative 3. And Z is negative 4, 0. And when I connect these dots, I'm going to notice something. I have like some sort of trapezoid-y thing. Well, what I can do is this. What if I, in a different color here, different color, blue, give me blue. Why am I not going blue here? Oh well. What if I colored this in with a box around it? Okay. And so now, instead of finding the area here, I found the area of the square minus area of four triangles. Because then I don't have to do the distance formula. This is actually good because I can count them. So if I label these A, B, C, and D, the area of the big square equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 that's a 56 units squared square. Okay, so that square is 56 units squared. So now I'm going to find the area of each individual triangle. So the area of triangle A equals 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's 1 half base times height equals 1 half of 4 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 equals 10. So this is actually equal to 10. The area of triangle B equals 1 half base times height. So I can count this 1 half of 1, 2, 3 times 2 equals 3. So the area of this is 3. 
the area of triangle C equals one half base times height again because it's a triangle. So it's going to be one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. So three times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, three times six times a half. So that's 18 times a half, which is nine. So the area of C is going to be nine. Area of triangle D equals. Now D is one, two, three, four, five by one, two. So it's one half of five times two is equal to five. And so this is equal to 5. So I have 56 minus 10 minus 3 minus 9 minus 3 because I subtract from the whole square area each of those individual areas. So I have 46, 43, 34, 31. So 31, 31 units squared is my area. This is actually 5. I messed that up. The area of D is actually 5. I wrote too sloppy. So this shouldn't be 3. This should actually be 5. I was just looking at that. So this should actually be 29 units squared. It's 29 units squared because I wrote it incorrectly. But I took the area of the big rectangle and subtracted the area of all the little triangles. That gave me the area, okay? I want you to see what you can do on the next one. Plot the points, find the areas that are like the negative space, so the space that's not filled, and subtract that from the overall area of the rectangle. All right, see if you can do that, and we'll see you next time.